Well, hello. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited to have you with us as we discover Alaska with Viking. I'm Carol Shaddix with Imagine Going Air Travel. We're a platinum cruise seller with Viking. What that means for you is we sell a lot of Viking, in fact, more than almost anybody in the company. And that means we know the itineraries really well. We're able to give you extra bonuses and maybe special pricing uh, that you might not know about, some special promotions that might be available for you. We're going to guide you along the way. And we just want to make sure that this is the best itinerary for you for your vacation dollars. So our webinar is going to start with a little bit of introduction about the itinerary. And then we'll go into the ship details. If you've never had a Viking Ocean Cruise, it's likely different from some of the other cruise lines you've sailed with, and we want you to know more about that. So let's get started. As we talk about Viking, one of the things I love to share is that ever since Viking's first ship hit the water in 2015, it has sailed to number one uh, in the small ship cruise line ever since. So a lot of guests have just had such an amazing experience. All verandas, and not a bad stateroom on the ship, as I like to say. And of course, they take you to amazing itineraries. So Viking sails to over 500 ports of call. So if there's an area on your bucket list, likely Viking can take you there. They go to all seven continents, whether it's their rivers, oceans, the Mississippi, or the expedition ships into the Great Lakes in Canada as well. So if we can help you with uh, another itinerary, then of course, reach out. We'll be happy to let you know where Viking sails, where you want to go. So let's talk about Alaska and the Inside Passage. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our cam the camera just so you can see these wonderful images. And we can talk more about um, the details of this itinerary. So the wonderful thing about Alaska and the Inside Passage with Viking is that we take our time. You have 11 days. Uh, a lot of the other cruise lines will do a seven-day itinerary. Sometimes they're round trips uh, instead of going uh, north or just south on the coast. So this 11-day option really allows you to spend some time, relax, and enjoy the incredible scenery that you're going to have along this huge state. And as uh, to illustrate that, a lot of people think that Alaska is, you know, when you're watching the Weather Channel and they have it off the coast of California and it's right there by Hawaii. <laughs> really, if you superimpose it over the uh, continental U.S., you can see just how big it is. So, of course, with our um, sailing itinerary, you're going to be going up the coast. But if you can do the extensions, you're going to be able to take in some of the amazing interior of this state. And it's just not to be missed. So... Uh, we're going to start in, for this seminar, we're going to start Vancouver going north. And you can see where you're starting here. You're going to be sheltered there in the Inside Passage, some beautiful scenic cruising there. And then we head into the area from Ketchikan up to Skagway, more sheltered um, sailing. So it really doesn't matter for this itinerary too much where you are on the, uh, which side of the ship you're on when you come out into Yakutat Bay and Valdez and Seward, of course, um, you might want to be on the coastal side, but uh, that'll just be something we can talk about when you're ready to travel. But this is uh, a nice itinerary with a lot of great stops in between that we're going to talk about now. We're starting off in Vancouver with uh, a wonderful uh, city here that if you have a chance to spend an extra day or two, you will really enjoy it. It is an amazing city. It will um, you'll be able to see some beautiful flowers. Uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, Stanley Park is here. You can walk at the downtown waterfront um, and spend some time here to relax, get over jet lag, and enjoy this beautiful cultural city. Then the next day, we're actually starting right off the bat with some beautiful scenic cruising. We're going to be cruising in the Inside Passage later in the day. Um, we'll start entering the outskirts of the Tongass National Forest. It's actually the largest forest in the U.S. with 17 million acres. But from that morning, when you wake up, you're going to have the opportunity to see wildlife right off the bat, possibly whales, maybe bald eagles. You'll see a lot of the local fishermen's boats as you spend the day cruising the scenic passage. But one of the things you may want to uh, spend time with on this first scenic cruising day is just enjoying some of the great lectures on board, whether you're learning about wildlife or Alaskan history, 
Uh, there is a lot of options of things to do on the ships, but of course you'll want to always have your camera ready because you might see some incredible sunsets. This was taken by a colleague who has some amazing photos throughout this presentation that you will really enjoy. Uh, so have that camera ready. Always be uh, looking out the windows because you never know when that wildlife is going to be, uh, you know, a whale will be breaching or you see some something amazing that uh, you'll want to take a photo of. So our first official stop will be um, Ketchikan. And the first, uh, the saying goes, you can't catch it can in Ketchikan. It's actually the second wettest city in the United States, gets a lot of rainfall. So if you have a sunny day like this, you're definitely lucky. Be prepared for that. But this is the famous historic district of Creek Street. A lot of wonder little, wonderful little restaurants and cafes here, little shops. Uh, if you time it right, you might see some salmon running. Uh, I, I think September is when you're going to have a lot of options there, but uh, when they are running, they are so thick. Uh, I'll just fill up this area here. You can almost walk across the backs of them without getting your feet wet. So our included experience is going to be uh, out to one of the totem parks where they recreate the 19th century native village. You'll learn about the totem poles and the history of the native Alaskans who were there well before the white settlers were. Uh, you might also want to consider doing some uh, scenic cruising up the Misty Fjords, where you'll be able to get into a smaller boat and really navigate through these deep fjords. It's also called Yosemite of the North because of its similar geology. So you'll really have some beautiful scenery here and small ship uh, excursions will allow you to get a little further into that area. There are a couple different opportunities we'll get to do as well. Well, you'll have to, uh, you can do like a float plane. You can uh, do some bear watching opportunities throughout the cruise. At, um, and um, they can take you to one of the islands where you do a little short hike. You'll be able to have a river viewing um, platform where you can potentially see the bears catch salmon, just depending on when the salmon are running, how many bears might be visible. But uh, one of the really uh, fun opportunities is to be able to go to the privileged access experience of the Saxman Native Village. And they really do a great job of explaining the Tlingit history and their culture. You're going to be able to interact with them. They're going to take you to their clan house. They don their colorful robes. These robes tell their own stories. You'll get a chance to see them dance. And if you don't want to be invited to dance, don't sit near the front. Uh, they're sure going to be asking you or pulling you up to do that. And there's out, then it's out to the carving shed, and you're going to be able to hear the stories about these totem poles, what they mean, the hierarchy of how they're designed. Um, and then you'll see how the native carvers actually teach the new apprentices the tools of the trade. So a really fun day here. And of course, um, special day. Don't spend all your money in Ketchikan because we've got a lot more to see. The next day we'll be going to Sitka and there are a lot of great things to do. If you want to um, do some fishing, this is a really popular port of call to do that other than Seward, a uh, really premier place to go deep sea fishing for salmon. Uh, you can do some creek fishing here as well for trout. This is really where you're going to see the Russian influence. Uh, there's Mount Edgecumbe there in the background, hasn't erupted for thousands of years. Um, but this area was first settled by the Russians in 1799, and it was an outpost for the Russian territory before it was transferred to the U.S. in 1867. You'll see a lot of Russian architecture here. And our panoramic tour is a view of Sitka and you'll stop at one of the historic parks that's known as Totem Park. And you'll see 18 totem poles there as well as a site of the battle between the Tlingits and the Russians. But if you really want a wildlife optional excursion, this is the place to do it. We have opportunity to travel through these fjords, uh, possibly get to see some sea otters or humpback whales. Um, here's an option to maybe uh, see some bald eagles, uh, just lots of straights and narrows around this island. Everywhere you look, there are just lots of opportunities. Um, some of the excursions are going to end with a wonderful lunch, an Alaskan king crab or wild salmon or prime rib with some homemade sides. 
Uh, some of the excursions actually go into some local sanctuaries. For instance, there is a, a raptor uh, excursion where they rehabilitate the falcons and the owls and the eagles. There's also the Fortress of the Bear experience where they have a viewing platform. You can feed the bears, learn about them. See this one here is like saying, throw it to me and kind of remind you of bear Mardi Gras. But no matter what part of the inside passage you do, you definitely want to keep your eyes peeled for those spectacular sunsets. Uh, you just never know when a breaching whale is going to give you an amazing photo opportunity. So um, wonderful day uh, along the uh, water and in the area here of Sitka. Then day five, we are going to go to beautiful Juneau. This is the capital of Alaska. It's not accessible by car. You have to get there by plane or boat. Uh, probably the toughest decision you'll have to make on your cruise because there's so many amazing shore experiences you can choose from. A tip would be just uh, when you're sailing in to wake up early, enjoy the sail into Juneau on the Gastineau Channel. It's beautiful. Uh, you want to get your cameras ready, take some great pictures. Uh, but we do spend a full day and into the early evening here. But even so, you just cannot do it all. Our included experience, we're going to have a tour of the city. We'll go to the newly renovated Alaska State Museum, and we'll take you out to the Tongass National Forest. Uh, there's a rainforest garden tour that's very popular. Uh, there's a tram you can take with really beautiful views as well. But it's really about getting to the optional experiences, going to Mendenhall Glacier, you, um, you'll be able to see it's about 13 miles long, I believe. It's a has a beautiful waterfall. You really can't see in the picture. Um, <clears throat> but there are a lot of options you can choose from, which are going to be Mendenhall Glacier and something else. So it'll be maybe um, helicopter up the glacier, going whale watching or hike or with the Mendenhall Glacier. Uh, just lots of wonderful options that uh, you'll be able to enjoy. Uh, really popular whale watching area here does here as well, where you can uh, potentially board a, a small vessel that'll take you out to see some of the beautiful um, wildlife there. Just so many great options. These are whales that are bubble net feeding. And uh, my colleague took this photo, amazing um, opportunity to see this, at, at, to get it on, on camera. But the uh, humpbacks will really just circle uh, and create their, um, once they locate the krill, they'll kind of uh, swim in a circle and blow bubbles to kind of trap the food source. And then um, they'll make this bubble net around them, which forces them to the surface. And then one or two or three of the whales will come up and, um, you know, jump up and catch, make their catch and then change places. So he got an amazing photo here of them doing that, but you may be able to see that. And one of the smaller research uh, vessels might just give you that opportunity because they're able to be a little more mobile and uh, go to where the, uh, maybe the whales are feeding, et cetera. So uh, just keep uh, opportunities to, you might see them on the ship, but you might uh, also want to do some of these shore excursions that'll take you a little bit more into the areas where you're more, more likely to see um, the wildlife, as you can see here. Uh, we have a great opportunity to do dog sledding here. One is to take a helicopter up to Mendenhall Glacier and do dog sledding there. That's really popular. There's also a five glacier flight seeing option. Uh, you can do ice trekking by helicopter or do um, Pacific halibut or salmon fishing excursions, just so many options. Even if you don't like fishing, you could do a nature guide with a professional photographer that's gonna help you take amazing photos. So like I said, lots to do in Juneau. You'll have, uh, have to pick among a lot of great options of what to do. Day six is gonna take us to Skagway and there's some amazing history here. It's the spirit of the old prospectors heading west. You want to get up early on this day as well and sail uh, into Chilkat Inlet and get some very good uh, views of this beautiful area. Um, at the very head of the Chilkat Inlet is the most northwestern city 
of the inside passage, and that is uh, Skagway, and Haynes is close to it, a little further south. You can do some shore excursions on either Skagway or Haynes, but um, Skagway is all about the um, the small town here of um, Skagway. Lots of history, as I said here. Um, it's really noted for the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad, which we'll talk about in a minute. But its population is only about a thousand people. It's going to make you feel like you're stepping off back in time because this was the jumping off point to the Yukon gold rush of 1898. So you'll see wooden boardwalks here, false storefronts. We've got a great overview of the city and an included tour. And you're, you're going to hear tales of Soapy Smith, which was a legend of for this uh, area back in the day, maybe see at the cemetery where he was buried. Um, you can travel by motor coach to the Chilkat Trail and have some beautiful views, actually get right to the Canadian border. So it's a great experience that we include in Skagway. Really easy town to walk around in with a lot of history. But like I said, it's really known for the White Pass Yukon Route Railroad. Uh, this um, is such a beautiful train ride. Uh, this here, um, Oh, goodness. This here is the uh, steam snowblower number one that clears the tracks of as much of as 30 feet of snow drifts that could be covering the tracks at any one time. But the White Pass Yukon Route Railroad has um, had a big history because it saved a lot of lives. Like before the train was built, uh, they were traveling over this dangerous pass in all kinds of weather. And it was very treacherous. And so loss of lives, very hard on the animals as well. And so this was a huge um, uh, engineering marvel, basically. In fact, it was actually noted as the um, historic civil engineering landmark in 1994. In fact, that's an honor that is shared only by 36 other civil engineering marvels. And that's in league with like the Eiffel Tower, the Statue of Liberty, Panama Canal, um, all the obstacles they overcame to get this uh, train to the, the elevation of almost 3,300 feet, uh, because the summit is really built on the edge of a cliff, and you'll just you're going to see some amazing scenery. So if you loved trains. You will definitely want to do this. A lot of options here. You can travel by vintage, luxury rail, um, lot, half day, full day. Just some great options to um, explore the White Pass Yukon Route Railroad. But we do have some other options that you can do that are a lot of outdoor activities. You can do canoeing in Haines. You can go kayaking on Chilkut Lake. We have uh, Wilds of Alaska, Alaska by ATV. You can do rock climbing or rappelling. It's just going to be one of your favorite stops along the way. As you can see, there's a lot to do here. Day seven is Icy Strait Point, and there's a lot of rich Native Alaskan history here. Um, it was uh, a fishing town. I think I have a picture of the cannery here uh, at one point. And the uh, it just exploded into a logging town. There's a large Tlingit community here. Uh, and you'll learn a lot about Native Alaskan history. Uh, Spassky River Valley Wildlife and Bear Search is famous for having the highest um, densities of coastal brown bears per square mile in the world. So also great bear watching opportunity, uh, as is Ketchikan. So another option to see whales. So... Her, some people say that Icy Strait Point gives Juno a real run for its money as far as whales go, um, but you can just see them cruising the inside passage, so um, always keep your camera ready and your eyes peeled because you never know when a whale is going to make one of those amazing appearances, or go ahead and just get on those smaller research vessels or smaller boats, and maybe you'll get some of these amazing photos. This is the cannery uh, that's fully restored. The locals um, would earn a living from the rich fishing industry here. And this is where they would come in and pack it. It really does bring out the whales. One of my colleagues actually um, spent the summers helping his dad fish these waters. And he said, I think we were the only people that would actually try to shoo away the whales because when we would bring the catch in, they knew it was a free, free lunch. And uh, it was so frustrating to have the 
um, the fish, you know, us bring our haul in and, and the whales get it for, uh, you know, just, they just, they're very smart and learned how to follow the fishing vessels. So this was the, the cannery, the local cannery that uh, was very popular here and very busy. Uh, then the next day is our scenic cruising day. This is a real highlight. We do Yakutut Bay and Hubbard Glacier and just uh, lots of glaciers, of course. We have Tidewater Glacier that you can experience, but this is really the Wow Glacier. And some people talk about Glacier Bay National Park, but Marjorie Glacier there is only about a mile and a half wide, one and a half miles wide, I'm sorry. Um, and this one is almost seven miles wide and the face above the water is over 300 feet high. So you're just talking about a mammoth wall of ice here. Um, as you're sailing in, you're going to be sailing into Yakutat Bay. So have your binoculars because you might see bears on the shore or either side of the ship. But this is where it ends into Disenchantment Bay. And that was named after a Spanish explorer who was looking at the Northwest Passage and literally ran into this wall of ice. Um, it's known as Hubbard Glacier today. It's steadily advancing and closes in a lot of the tributary fjords. That's um, of course, that depends on the time of year, but it's definitely pushing that ice and debris down from the San Linus Mountains where uh, it starts from. Uh, and that is actually the highest coastal mountain range on the Earth. Um, so this glacier is 76 miles long, 600 feet tall, and about only 350 feet of it is above the waterline, but when you're on that Viking ship, you are going to be looking straight up at this ice wall, and that's how tall it is. Um, it's ex it's just considered the best glacier experience in all of Alaska. Do you know why the glaciers are blue? Well, they're even more blue when you have an overcast day than on a sunny day. And the reason is the ice is so dense that the glacier absorbs all the colors of the spectrum except blue. And so that's why you see this amazing blue color. Day nine is sailing into Prince William Sound, and we're going to see um, Valdez, Alaska here. You're in port nearly every single day, um, and uh, you're going to really enjoy these um, amazing stops. This one has a lot of beautiful scenery. There's a really deep fjord here. You might see some otters. You might see this beautiful Columbia Glacier. Look how still the water is. It almost looks like a pond. Um, get out and see the countryside. Take a boat cruise out to see these beautiful glaciers and enjoy that. But if you want to stay in town, we do have the option to have what Viking calls a privileged access tour into um, the old Valdez exhibit, which is a history here was there was a good uh, an earthquake on Good Friday in 1964, and it was 9.2 on the Richter scale. It caused so much damage that much of the town slid under the sea, and they moved this town about three or four miles back in because of all the devastation. So you'll be able to uh, learn some firsthand accounts of those that lived through that terrible experience, and of course. Um, other options as well, but of course, that's what uh, Valdez is known for. You can see Alaska by air here, and that's always a popular option. I'd say if you can do flight seeing, definitely take advantage of that. It is just fabulous. Day 10, then we're going to go to Seward, and lots of possibilities here because we overnight here. Um, you're going to get a full day and into the evening before you disembark the following day. So what can you do in Seward? Well, if you're not sick of watching whales, you go to the Kenai Fjords. Uh, the Alaskans refer to that as their playground and that's where they go on vacation. So we have several options here. There's one that goes as far out as Resurrection Bay where you can do sail, water, sail whale watching or have the opportunity to see more sea otters. Uh, you can do, uh, there's a marine life center here um, that also has a privileged access option. So you could go visit the beautiful Alaska Resort, uh, which is um, a visit by tram and some incredible views. You can even go dog sledding, uh, get into a 
helicopter and do some flight seeing. As I mentioned, dog sledding is always very, very popular. And the next day, you'll actually be disembarking your ship. So that is the wonderful itinerary that you'll have with Viking. And then to talk about how to extend your stay, I would really recommend looking at Viking options. I always suggest when you're booking a cruise, go ahead and put the um, extensions that you're interested in on your itinerary. It's not going to change your deposit. And that way you reserve them because they go so fast and they're very hard to find cancellations for. So put them on there. You can always change your mind and drop them later at final payment or um, you know, as long as you do it before ticketing, you can do it then as well. But as I mentioned, we have the two nights in Vancouver. Uh, Rocky Mountaineer will be on the Vancouver end, regardless of which direction you go. So that does sell out quickly and it's very, very popular. So encourage you to do that, either uh, the Rocky Mountaineer or the Canadian Rockies, which is uh, actually extra time in Vancouver. Then on the Anchorage end, you can do your two nights uh, hotel stay there. Or do the Denali experience. Very, very popular. You get the domed rail cars, get to go into the interior of Alaska and it's fully guided tour. Uh, Pristine Alaska is uh, the six night option instead of five nights. Now, when you travel with Viking, you're always going to get amazing service. But when you use us, you're actually going to get some extras as well. Uh, we always can provide you an extra 100 per person ship or credit just for booking with us. Um, even if you've booked in the last 60 days, if you book direct with Viking, we can still add that for you. And you'll have the coaching and the suggestions, all the tips that we can offer as well to help you really enjoy this journey. So now let's talk about what you're going to be sailing on. And it's this beautiful Viking ship. It is 930 gas. As you can see, it's just very yacht-like. All the staterooms are... <clears throat> our balconies, as you can see here. And it's just a lovely, sleek, yacht-looking ship, and you'll just really enjoy it. <clears throat> now, Viking does like to say yes to so many things, but there's some things that they say no to. And one of the reasons that I really appreciate that is those are things that most of us don't want anyway. No casinos are on board, no children under 18. The chairman has said Viking likes Viking guests likes to travel with their grandchildren. They just don't like to travel with other people's grandchildren. Um, and uh, then we have no umbrella drinks, no pre-made drinks that they're always coming around trying to sell you. If you want a drink, you just go to the bar or they'll be happy to um, check in with you and make one for you fresh. No photographers interrupting your dinner or impeding you getting on or off the ship. No art auctions or formal nights. You have um, a smoke-free environment. There's no charge for beer, wine, and soft drinks. There's There are no corkage fees. Uh, bring that uh, drink that you have gotten to experience or that bottle of wine on board, and they'll be happy to uncork that for you without a problem. There are no charges for Wi-Fi. It's unlimited. Such a great savings. I was on a cruise recently, and they wanted $500 for Wi-Fi for the week. I was very surprised and realized how spoiled I am with Viking. They even have laundrettes on board. So you can uh, you do your laundry. Even the soap is included. If you would like to um, help not have to pack so much, that's what I enjoy doing. Um, no entrance fee for the spa. It's completely free. But if you do get a service like a massage or facial, you will pay for that. But there's no sales pressure. No inside staterooms, no butlers, and no charge for alternative restaurants. You can just see how many extras there are and what a different experience that is. And now to look at the atrium. This is the main area when you come in, um, and it's beautiful. I love the warmth that this atrium has uh, on either side or little living areas, as they call it, the living room. Uh, where you can gather with friends before dinner and listen to some beautiful music. The screen at the top of the stairs is an interactive screen that changes scenery throughout the day, but at 6 p.m. there's a partnership with the Edvard Munch Museum, and so get some art history there as well. And Norway's favorite sun is displayed there. So as you're sitting there enjoying the new friends you've made or the friends you've traveled with, this is the area that you are going to be uh, having um, 
a great time with whether you're sitting here waiting for dinner, listening to some great music, or just enjoying relaxing or reading during the day. And speaking of uh, reading during the day, this is my favorite place, Explorer's Lounge. It's two stories, and you can see the interactive maps, the faux reindeer skins. Upstairs is a library um, with some great views, and this is a favorite place for those scenic cruising days. Then we have the main pool with a retractable roof. You can see regardless of what the weather's like, you have a heated pool that you can enjoy uh, getting some exercise in, enjoying uh, feeling like you're outside, but not having it be too cool if uh, the weather is not perfect. And then we have the infinity pool. Makes you feel like you're sailing in your destination. And of course the spa, and it's a lovely spa. You'll see guests just sitting here and enjoying uh, chatting with it, each other. Then there's the Whirlpool. And um, of course, we've got the Snow Grotto, a wonderful invention that Viking has that you have gently falling snowflakes. Then you uh, stimulate the body circulation, go into the sauna, go over to the ice bucket challenge, try this experience shower over here in the corner. And of course, the uh, locker rooms have wonderful saunas, et cetera, as well. Wonderful day. Uh, spend an afternoon here on a sea day and you'll really enjoy it. Viking has the best dining choices, eight restaurants. There are no additional charges for any of those. Uh, the restaurant has beautiful views. Manfredi's and the chef's table are your alternative restaurants that do require reservations. And you can have those based on um, how many you get to reserve in advance based on your stateroom category. But of course you can go on board the ship and, and if there's um, an opening, just uh, go and see and, uh, they can usually fit you in. I've never had issue with that. Mamson's Norwegian Deli has some wonderful waffles with caramelized goat cheese in the morning, um, open paste sandwiches in the afternoon with some great desserts. And at night, there's a delicious split pea soup. The Winter Garden is the um, high tea experience in the afternoon. One of my favorite things. Uh, and you will just really enjoy that. Uh, but there is tea and coffee available 24 seven as well. Uh, the chef's table is a wine pairing menu and World Cafe has some really great food. I just find myself going there a lot because maybe I just want the variety or um, I just want a quick dinner so I can get back into port. And of course, there's the pool grill and then 24 hour room service as well. All of these are included with your fare. And then to choose the right stateroom, a few tips with this. I just took a example of a page of, on the pricing page. And a lot of guests will say, why are there so many staterooms that are same square footage, but different prices? So I wanted to explain that. The uh, veranda one and two are one category and deluxe veranda six are another category. So based on the category of stateroom you book, you have different amenities. So for instance, in the deluxe veranda category, you're going to have earlier access to your stateroom on embarkation day. There's extra staterooms amenity extra stateroom amenities in your stateroom. In the deluxe veranda category, for instance, you're getting um, a coffee maker, your mini bar is stocked daily with soft drinks, water, and snacks, which is complimentary. Um, you have earlier window to book your short excursions. I usually say at least do the deluxe veranda um, because there are 272 staterooms in this category. And so when the short excursions open up, it doesn't matter if you're deluxe veranda one or six, 3 p.m. on the date of, uh, that they open, you have the same um, opportunity to book regardless of the Deluxe Veranda stateroom you have chosen. So uh, Deluxe Veranda 1, for instance, is going to be higher up on the ship, maybe in between the Explorer Suites. Um, Deluxe Veranda 2, 4, and 6 are your more midship staterooms. So, of course, we're happy to help explain the best stateroom, best position on the ship when you are ready to book. Here's a view of the Deluxe Veranda stateroom. You can see it's a gorgeous stateroom. Uh, there's a balcony for every room. Uh, ladies, here is a great um, makeup mirror when you open up that table. So you get some natural light, which a lot of times is um, such better way to put your makeup on than trying to do it in the bathroom. And of course, save some space there as well. Uh, you've got a lovely bathroom uh, for each uh, category and they have drawers to them, which I love that if you don't have to worry about things, you know, knocking things over, rolling around or whatever. And um, the next category is penthouse veranda, which I don't have a picture of here, 
but that is a larger stateroom, 338 square feet. And then we go to the penthouse veranda and you can see much bigger. It's got a sofa in there. It's also got a uh, partition that closes. So you actually can have, uh, you know, some privacy or if uh, one travel partner gets up early or stays up later than the other, it doesn't bother the other one from whatever they're doing. And of course, a larger stateroom as well. And then the bathroom has some additional things such as um, double vanity sinks, uh, warming towel rack, and extra things in the stateroom such as alcohol and uh, shoe shine pressing service laundry. All those extras come as you go up into uh, the higher categories. And this is the Explorer Suite. So uh, you can see full chase lounges. These are either forward or aft on the ships. So there's a lot more room. Plenty of uh, space in the bathrooms. This is the category that has the tubs if you want that. And uh, of course, plenty of room to spread out, host your friends and just enjoy in sweet dining if you choose to do that. Then for a peek at the owner's suite, there's only one of these on every ship. And this is where the chairman stays when he travels. Uh, it is a beautiful stateroom and they go quickly. So uh, if you want the owner's suite, we definitely need to um, get on that as soon as possible because there's uh, it's in high demand and it is beautiful. Now, remember with Viking, all of this is included. You do have your veranda staterooms, your adults only uh, cruise, uh, re your reduced air with Viking also includes free transfers to and from the ship. So it's a wonderful convenience not to have to worry about how to get to and from the ship if you've done air with Viking. Free shore excursions in every port of call. Then we have free wine, beer, and soft drinks with your meals. The specialty teas and coffees are available 24-7 as well as a high tea experience. And we have free alternative dining restaurants as well. Free room service, great uh, option there when you just want to relax or sleep in or have a short excursion that you have to get up for first thing in the morning. Free access to the spa as well. Free laundry, and that does include the soap as well, which is great. Plus, you're going to have our amazing service because we are here for you every step of the journey. We really love helping our clients experience everything possible that Viking offers. Uh, we're giving you those extra bonuses you might not know to ask for, as well as special surprises because we love surprising our guests and helping them really enjoy their vacations. Our motto is you want to travel while you can, while you have the time with great experiences that are really meaningful and that are worth your investment. We feel like Viking is that, and it is for so many people. They've just been voted number one again across all categories, which is incredible. Our motto with our company is great vacations matter because great memories matter most. So we are excited to help you answer questions and be your consultant. Give us the opportunity to give you our concierge service, Viking Paces, to help you. So it is totally complimentary to you. And it's a way that we can help invest in your wonderful vacations and know that you um, are going to have a great experience with Viking. Feel free to reach out. I'm Carol with Imagine Going There Travel, carol at imaginegoingthere.com. And my phone number is there as well, 770-421-9627. Look forward to talking to you soon.